All right, y'all, we're gonna do an oil change on this old dinosaur right here. And the motor in my truck is a, it's an Acert C13 cat motor, uh, twin turbo. So if you're wondering, that's what it is. I had a VO up originally, like six months ago, but the valve that I had down there on my drain plug that thing fell apart so i had to take the video down because i didn't want to have that in my video so here's the new video guys this will tell you all the tools you need and the process of draining and refilling the oil on this bad boy right here i'll also show what to do to avoid this happening all right so the very first thing i do is drag these ramps out i just made them myself out of two by fours it's pretty easy to do and then once I got them out, just drive up on it. My driveway sits at a downhill slope, so once the truck is up on it, it's pretty flat and the oil drains out fine. It's hard to get around under the truck without it elevated. Well, let's go over first all the things you're gonna need. First of all, definitely some cardboard. Probably gonna spill some oil, I always do. That's just uh, what I do, you know, I spill oil. Get you some kitty litter, need a lot of kitty litter. Let's see, my drain plug. I'll tell you what size it is real quick. Inch and a half. Gets you a pretty good size break over. Because uh, that thing is on there pretty tight. And you got to put it back on there pretty tight too. You don't want it coming loose. So get you like a break over too. Just in case. I mean not a break over. Get you a cheater pipe just in case. You know it's a little tight. And you can uh, get some leverage on that sucker. You know. Get you some buckets. What else? Obviously, you're going to need your oil. My motor takes uh, 10 gallons, obviously a filter. And you don't have to fill that filter before you put it on there. Just put it on there, on there empty. You fill that thing up and try to put it up in there, you're going to make a mess. I mean, it's already a mess. But you're going to make even more of a mess. So you don't want to do that. What else do we need? Oh, you need uh, something to poke a hole in the bottom of that filter to drain all the oil out. Just, you know, something like this, like a chisel. You can... Uh, Use like a claw hammer and pound like two or three holes in that thing and it'll drain all the oil out. That way whenever you twist off the filter, it doesn't, you know, make a mess everywhere. See, I got these ideas. Well, I mean, somebody else already did it, but I'm just passing on the knowledge, guys. And of course, you're going to need an oil filter wrench. This one right here works really good. It's got a good range on it, as you can see. You know, it goes all the way down to, what is that, two and a half inches? And then it goes, I mean, it goes way out. You can see right there how far out it goes. Yeah, you're going to need you some rags too or some paper towels. We already drained out the oil for a, a short I was doing. And I made a damn mess. I was trying to just make a little bit of a mess for uh, comical purposes, but it got out of hand. It wasn't supposed to happen that way, but hey, <laughs> it did. Well, now that you guys have seen the disaster unfold, you'll see what I did to make sure it doesn't ever happen again. Hopefully. So I, uh, I had a stroke of genius. I went out to my storage shed and I found an ice chest that I never use. So I gave it a catchy name, threw it underneath the truck, and it was easily able to hold all uh, nine gallons, well, probably eight since one of them was out on the ground. It's just so nice to have something that can hold all the oil. Used to, I would have to drain a little bit into one bucket, put the plug back up in there, bring over the other bucket, take the plug out, let it drain, and then do that one more time, and it was just a pain in the ass. So once I was finished with it, just drug it out, and then uh, carried it over to the maze runner, and got my cart out, and just drain it out from up high into the buckets. Or you could just take the whole ice chest up to O'Reilly's, uh, either way. And naturally I got oil in my cart, so I had to drain that out. So now let's let's go ahead and tighten that drain plug. Because like I said, all the oil's already drained out of that motor. And if you're wondering how tight I get mine, a 
basically as tight as I can get with this breakover. <clears throat> Do your bench press. And one of these oil drain pans works really well for draining out the oil from the oil filter. Just stick it, at least on mine, goes right underneath the axle. There's the filter. Now I might add before I do this, I usually forget to do this. Go ahead and loosen up that oil filter just a little bit. Not to where it's leaking oil. Just loosen it up a little. Then you can poke the holes in the bottom of that filter, let it drain out. And then you can twist it off without having to deal with all that oil and stuff. Because if you don't loosen it at first, and then you try to loosen it after poking those holes in it, it can get really messy. Ugh. Come on. Damn, I put that on there too tight. Uh, oh. There it goes. Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and poke some holes in the bottom of this. Three holes, that'll drain out pretty quick. And while that's draining, let's go ahead and get out this oil filter here. Take the plastic off of it. Do what we can while the oil's draining. Go ahead and dip my finger here in this black juice. Just caress that rubber seal ever so gently. Kaboom, she's ready. And I'll tell you how tight to get this thing. Shows you right here, these directions kind of suck though. And step one is just put it on there and lube it. Step two, hand tighten three one extra turn so what i do is just spin it on there you know until it stops and then once it stops i go one more turn but you know you can kind of get a feel for it really this isn't like foolproof one thing that sucks about doing it this way is if it's windy huh get ready it's gonna blow this oil all over the place but i've tried to take that off with the filter full and it's tucked up in there so far and you can't just drop it down straight. You drop it down straight, it hits the axle. So then you gotta turn it. You're gonna make a mess that way. This is just the way that works best for me, but you do what works for you. But I'm always trying to do crap out here while the oil's draining. That way I'm not killing time. Like this hammer and chisel, I don't need that anymore. So we can go ahead and put it up. We're done tightening the drain plug. So we can go ahead and put the brake over up. What else? Don't need this no more. And hell, we might as well get started on getting that oil moved out here. You know, if you guys don't have a cart, this is like one of the best things that I've ever purchased. This little cart right here. This thing is awesome. And of course, I'm four gallons short, so now I gotta go to Atwoods. Awesome. Just so you know, guys, uh, as far as oil goes, the best price I could find for what I use, which is Mobile Delvac, is at Atwoods um, or Walmart. Don't get this from O'Reilly's. Don't get it from AutoZone. They're going to rip you off. Don't get it from the truck stop. Don't get it from the dealership. Either go to Atwoods or go to Walmart. Those are going to be your best bets. Okay, she's pretty much drained out. That's uh, as good as it's going to get, so let's go ahead and go ahead and twist it the rest of the way off. Ah, oh, jeez. There we go. And it's long-winded. Takes a minute to spin this thing off. But man, the suspense. I'm always sitting there waiting for it to come crashing down. Anytime. A few more spins. Just make sure you don't let your guard down because <laughs> it'll fall whenever you least expect it. There it goes. I caught it. Kaboom. All right, now we got our new filter. Do what? 
Okay. Dinner's ready, boys. Go ahead and put her back up in there. <clears throat> Golly, it's a long ways up there. Oh man, I got lucky. Spun right on there. Luck or skill? You know, one of the two. Okay, let's back back off. Let's just spin it till it stops. Right there. Let's mark that so we know where we're at. Right there. Yeah, I can see that. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. Let's take her all the way around the world, boys. This is hard with one hand. I'm used to that. <laughs> Oh, what was that? Halfway? It's already getting tight. Uh, got three fourths away. We're gonna have to use both hands and do the rest of the way. That's one time around after being hand tight. There's our mark. Uh, you know, and while we're under here, get this thing out of the way. Might as well clean up what I can down here. Gotta love it. Get the back side of that too. Get over here too. Since I made a mess here earlier with my brilliant idea. Just trying to be funny from a short. Look what happened. Got me in trouble. That'll work. All right, so we just came back from that woods. Let's go ahead and wheel this bad boy on out here and start changing, start putting in the new oil. Well, while we're in here in the light, let's go ahead and take these caps on off of here. So now we got all the caps pulled off of these. They're ready to, to pour into the motor. While I'm in here, I'll tell you a little bit about this stuff. I always use at least a gallon of this in every oil change. I think it says it's good for, it says uh, use 20% of system capacity. So use two gallons for eight gallons of motor oil. I don't know, I think that's a little thick. I just, I stick one gallon in there for 10 gallons, so I like to do 10%, but if you want to do 20%, that is up to you. But anyway, I always throw a gallon of it in there, and it's really thick, so I'll show you a trick to how I, I uh, pour this stuff, make it a little faster. And if you're out here and you're in the darkness, good place to hang your light, right up there on the fender. You can see everything. So on my truck, right here, that's where fill up the oil back here's the dipstick the ends of them are really narrow so it makes it where the oil flows really slowly so just cut about three or four inches off the end of that and you'll get a little bit better flow go ahead and start pouring our first one in there all right and here's my trick with this stuff let's go ahead and pull this cap on off of here pull this off whenever you start pouring this you want to Keep an eye down here at the bottom to make sure it's not coming up because sometimes it can flow too fast and this whatever you call this thing where the oil goes into the engine it can't keep up with the flow and it starts coming back up so you got to watch that so right here's a good time to step in and say you should probably leave that gallon of lucas oil additive or whatever sort of additive you're using because they're all pretty thick Leave it in your house the night before and let it warm up. Rather than doing like I did and use a jug that had been sitting out in the cold garage for weeks, just think of hot syrup, how much easier it flows than syrup when it's cold. So try to do that and it won't come back up like you keep seeing it do in this video. You can see how thick it is right there. But this is all you gotta do. Of course, I dropped it. Stab a hole in the top of this. Give it a little bit of air. Oh, that was flowing fast. Let's try this again. See, that's what I'm talking about. Anyway, you don't want to dump this stuff all at once because just, it just can't keep up with the flow. Maybe if you don't poke the holes in it, 
you won't have it coming back up right there at the mouth. That's the word I was looking for, mouth. See, it's trying again already. We're gonna dump some oil down in that just to wash down that crap. Of course I spilled it. Christ, I'm making a mess out here. Okay, I think we finally got all this. This stuff is so sticky and it's so thick. Once you're done with it, look at that. It just, it just goes forever. It's so hard to not make a mess with this crap. There we go. Jeez. We are finally finished up. Let's go ahead and put this cap back on here. That's one thing you sure don't want to do because it's easy to do. People just want to, are just ready to close the hood and be done with this crap and forget about stuff like this. There's that. Make sure the dipstick is down. Good to go. We'll check the oil tomorrow morning when, when it's all settled. We'll get this thing started up. Let that oil filter fill up. Because if you check it right now, it's not going to be right. Because that's 10 gallons in there. And it's not, it hadn't filled up the oil filter yet. So you got to wait till it fills up the oil filter. Then you can check it. Because it's going to show that it's too full right now. Okay, so we got the motor started up and let it idle for a little bit drove it up here to my parking spot got the trailer hooked back up so that oil filter should be full by now so let's go ahead and check the oil see where we're at damn it looks like it actually needs a little bit i'm surprised well the dipstick doesn't lie and we're on flat ground so i don't know i guess maybe that much oil leaked out whenever I had that oil coming back up out of the uh, funnel. Who knows? But anyway, we're gonna put in a, oh, about another, I don't know, quarter of a gallon and then see where we're at. And some of this could be accounted for with the fact that the truck leans a little bit to the passenger side and we're checking on the driver's side. So we're not gonna fill it all the way to the top. Hard to find flat ground around here. See, I'm holding the phone pretty level. You can see it leans a little bit. But this is just shows you why it's important to check your oil after you do an oil change. You never know where it's sitting at. That ought to be enough. And this tank right here, full of antifreeze, kind of shows you how much it, it leans too. See that right there? <laughs> That's level. Now let's go ahead and check it. I bet you we're going to be exactly where we want to be on this. I added maybe a third of a gallon, something like that. That's perfect. And just so you guys know, this mark right here that says full, and this mark right here that says add, that gap in between those two, that's a gallon. So if you're sitting right there on add, just add a gallon, and it'll put you right there to full. Well, I have no more footage from the oil change, so here's some footage from a delivery I recently ran about 10 miles north of Miami, Texas. It's a really beautiful country. A uh, pretty common question about oil changes is how often to do an oil change. There's mo multiple factors that play into oil change intervals, including um, type of driving, conditions, idle time, and what type of oil you're using. Maintenance manuals can have uh, six or seven different schedules when it comes to oil change intervals You'll just have to figure out the best time to change your oil Because everybody's situation is different. I will tell you how often I change mine and maybe your conditions are similar to mine I typically don't go farther than 500 miles from home. I'm home almost every day About 50% of my driving is on the interstate 30% on state highways and 10% is on the back roads, including uh, dirt roads, and 10% is idling. So I average around 1,500 miles a week, uh, but the last few months has been about probably 1,000 miles a week. I never run over 1,500 RPM and average about 68 mile per hour on the interstate. 60% of my drive time is loaded and 40% empty. I average 5.5 miles per gallon and I just use regular old 15w40 oil not partial or full synthetic 70% of my loads put me at almost 80,000 pounds and the rest can vary from 50,000 pounds to 70,000 pounds loaded 
So now I'll tell you how often I change my oil. I change it about every 13,000 miles, 15,000 at the most. If I'm idling a lot, I will change it at 10,000 miles. Since I mentioned idling, let's talk about that for a minute. Idling can be very hard on your motor. It also uses a gallon of diesel per hour. Idling your motor at low RPMs does twice the damage to internal components compared to operating at a normal load. Why is that? Idling causes a lot of carbon buildup in the engine. If you're idling a lot, mirror glazing can occur in the cylinder walls. Mirror glazing is when there is a mirror-like finish on the walls around the pistons and that causes more oil to pass by the piston rings and creates a large amount of blow-by. The main reason heavy idling causes damage though is that diesels need to operate at higher temperatures. To get a complete burn of the fuel diesel needs a very high combustion chamber temperature. Without that you get carbon buildup which leads to problems. Diesel motors need to run at a load to get the best out of them. My CAT engine idles around 650 RPM, that's pretty low, but CAT recommends to idle between 800 and 1200 RPM to avoid the carbon buildup. This will increase the engine temperature which leads to a cleaner burn of the diesel fuel. And I usually idle at around 850 RPM. It's kind of weird to idle at 1000 RPM. It's just, I can't get used to it, but I at least idle at 800, but typically 850. Another important point when it comes to idling is to idle your engine at least three minutes in the morning, even for newer trucks. Oil needs time to circulate before the engine has a load placed on it. So you should also idle no less than five minutes when shutting the motor off. The reason for that is that the turbo spins at very high speeds. Sometimes it can spin up to 100,000 RPMs. And when the motor is immediately turned off after parking, the engine oil pressure drops suddenly, you know, down to nothing and starves the turbo of oil, which is essential while it is winding down, which that does significant damage over time to the turbo and shortens its, its life drastically. Well, that's enough about idling. Hopefully this video helps you out. Try to find something like an ice chest that will hold all the oil. Switching buckets during an oil change is extremely messy. <laughs> Try to use a stabilizer. It increases my oil pressure slightly, which should extend the life of the motor. Get some kitty litter. Make sure you put that oil stabilizer, whatever you get, in the house the night before to warm it up so it flows a little better. So that's it, guys. Hopefully you got something out of this video. I try to put as much information as I can think of in the video. But don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share do all the things even if you choose not to just your view of the video is appreciated and helps my channel so thank you for that congratulations if you made it to the end i know this is a it's a long video but i like to put like i said as much info in it as i can without trying to rush through it it's hard to do videos that are three or four minutes long when it comes to things like these because it's just so much you got to pack into it. But it's understandable if you didn't make it this far. Anyway, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you subscribe to my channel, hey, you'll find an ice chest somewhere. You'll find one. You're welcome.